everyone, Lau here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Vlogmas. If you're just here to watch the tutorial that comes in the end of the video, then um, you can skip this Christmassy part because it's now part of my um, Vlogmas series, but maybe you find this video way later and you're not interested in Vlogmas or anything of that and you're just interested in the tutorial. Uh, so you can skip ahead some minutes and then you will, you are good to go. So we are at day 21. It's the 21st of December. So, woo! I cannot kind of believe that we're doing this now for 21 days now already. Because it still feels like I've just started. But when I think of like 21 to the 21st when I was a child like this was already the time when I, I, I couldn't handle my excitement for Christmas anymore because you know 21 it's just like three days until the 24th and like oh I mean I'm not a child anymore I'm not that excited for Christmas I'm more kind of excited for all the things around which we are in still right now and I have to enjoy it as long as we're still in the pre-Christmas time so huge part of that is opening up advent calendars and let's start here with the Disney mystery pin advent calendar 21 20 ah you're right in the middle there it is 21 okay what is it Put it on the pin board. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, definitely. It's Simba from The Lion King in his grown up form. Uh, not his child form, but when he's grown up and is fighting for his throne. Wow, he looks great. I mean, it's, it's, um, this pin is from the good versus evil pack so in this pack uh, there would have been the option to from one movie get the villain character and then the hero character so the um, counterpart of this would have been Scar. I had Scar on one of my first days from another set where is it actually? There <laughs> is cutie form but I mean they still go together right? The Lion King was one of my favorite movie movies Disney movies as a child so, and this pin looks gorgeous. Cool, we're good to go uh, to the second advent calendar. Now I have to, where is it? It's so deep here. 20, 21. Duh. Let's open it up and what kind, let's see what kind of small goodies are in here. Small toys, toy accessories, stuff like that. There we go. So nice. Ah. Okay, this one is again in another bag. Man. Why did I do that to me? Two things from Generation 1, My Little Pony. Oh, and I'm so excited to finally again have this in my hand. Let's start with this. This is a school bag of the school time ponies. I can get one right out and show you. And I had this as a child. I clearly remember playing with this. How it feels. Oh, I even taped this together. No, I think I didn't do that. It must have been from the seller. I can open it. And I clearly remember the feeling of like putting this around my ponies and like putting this inside. I don't know why, but I have this. This is something like, like a memory that I have. And here we've got a nice pony comb, light yellow, uh, this star comb. Let's, let's uh, check which pony it came with. Okay, quick research done and this star comb came with a pony that I have just shown you uh, some uh, videos ago. It came with player, so Dance and Prance pony player that also came one of the other things that we had in the calendar, where is it actually? Not this one. Ah, yeah, this one here, sorry. 
this hair clip and it makes sense because I think I got this in the same lot, in the same accessory lot like this hair clip and this one or at least from the same seller that this one then actually really came with player so he's getting more and more complete I mean these uh, those uh, that's a prince ponies came with lots of accessories so lots of styling uh, bits and bobs um, but this comp also originally somehow came with um, twinkle light pony sweet stuff so this would also go together And for this bag I didn't need to research. I know that it came with the school time ponies, for example with music time. Let's put it around her. Oh, so cute. I love it. And these uh, school bags only came with this set of four ponies. I can only show you two because I have um, music time and I have sports time. Two of my childhood ponies. Now these ones, I don't have any of my childhood ponies anymore, but I'm trying to get back all of them and these two I have. Now I just need also another bag for, um, for sports time. Such a cutie. Okay, from ponies to Star Wars now, because um, for today I just thought, yesterday I uploaded an Ahsoka themed um, video for like a cosplay showcase video and today I just continue with the Ahsoka themed um, videos and show you a tutorial of how I make those gloves to cover my hands instead of painting them orange. Um, you know, Ahsoka Tano orange colored um, uh, skin, she's a Togruda, so either you have to body paint yourself completely, all the parts that are like, and you can see of your skin, or you can use some tricks like with um, uh, tights to go over your um, arms and stuff like that and I show you how you can make um, gloves out of these tights to also have covers for your hands instead of painting this so um, have fun with that see you hello everyone now here and welcome to another cosplay related video today I'm trying to show you a tutorial like really trying to show you step by step how you can do your own um, gloves <laughs> that you can use for um, when you have cosplay characters that actually have a different skin color like aliens or anything like I'm going to show you how I make my Ahsoka Tano um, like hand socks I don't know what people call them and so you can use them instead of really painting your skin orange um, these ones I have here, I just show you as an um, um, example, these are from my Shakti cosplay, so they are a darker uh, orange color, but they're basically the same. You can put them on, and they are artificial fingernails, and then you don't have to paint your hand with any kind of um, body paint and have to um, like think about that it rubs off on whatever you're touching and you have to reapply it, stuff like that. You don't have to worry about and to be honest, I think they look pretty realistic. So, um, yeah, and many people have asked me this and I'm kind of um, like tired of always explaining it, like writing a message, yeah, first you have to do this and that. So I thought, just make a tutorial, it's easy. So first of all, you need to be able to sew, obviously, because they are sewn, <laughs> um, but all the rest, it's, I think it's pretty easy and first of all I will show you what you need so first of all you need some paper for the pattern construction the pen then of course you need um, the material I'm using tights this is uh, always the brand of tights I'm using I can link it also down below if I find still um, some places online where you can buy it it's an orange like 40 Dane um, like normal tights I'm also using those like for other parts of Ahsoka's body when whenever I'm not using like real body paint because I myself use like body paint mostly just for the face 
and all the rest like arms or when, when you see part of her legs or something that's always covered with these tights. So here you can see what they look like because I have multiples of them. This is what we're using. Obviously scissors, um, thread, a sewing machine which is somewhere else <laughs> and then afterwards artificial fingernails. I'm using always like these super cheap ones from Primark. Um, I think Ahsoka has slightly like a, um, darker nails than what we normally would have so like brownish around so that's why I'm using these brown ones but any artificial nails that you can get wherever in the drugstore will probably do. Um, the thing is <laughs> You obviously don't use them like this, super pointy and, and long. So I already prepared for you um, that we're using them in a very like small uh, size. You will see that, but like... And to um, apl um, apply them, either you use, use the, the glue that's in the package or I always just use simple super glue. So I think that's it. If I forgot something, then you will see it along the way. But most important thing, the tights, scissors, and paper for the pattern construction and the fingernails. So for the pattern construction, I just lay down my hand very flat on the paper. Um, make sure you stretch your fingers out really like every finger as far away from the other as possible so that you're, you're not like doing it like this or I don't know, like, like this really try to have like an even space between all of them and yeah let's just do it like we all did in kindergarten draw a line around your hand and it re really doesn't make a difference if you're like left-handed or right-handed or whatever um, no difference if you use your right or your left arm or hand as the pattern construction so tada and um, now you just have to make sure to make it a little bit like sh definitely shorten the, um, the fingers a little bit because the material also stretches in that direction otherwise you have to like too much um, yeah you have too much uh, space so that's always what I'm doing like somehow like this I actually have my own pattern construction that I'm always using um, but for this video I decided to go along with you together and make a new one so then make sure that here it is not just like uh, pointy or something that you have it really round so you can uh, have good space for sewing here. Okay. Here it is already good. Here again. Now this is my original pattern construction. Let's let's see how different it still is and where we have to take uh, some um, centimeters off or something. Because you know the fingers are pretty pretty accurate. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but here we definitely have to go some some uh, more into this space between like your thumb and your um, your pointing finger. So somehow more like this, more inside here. Ah, yeah, and also here this space is also then there would be too much fabric apparently. So more like this. I would recommend trying out uh, this pattern construction or buying, buying for example, when you do it for the first time, buying two pairs of tights already. So you have one uh, if the first uh, one doesn't turn out so good. But actually, like this. Is it? You know, it's pretty similar. It's pretty similar to what I'm always using. So, and shorten the fingers a tiny little bit. 
um, making this 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 part between the fingers here more rounder, more spacious, um, and taking away some um, some space here and here. So going in, so suck. And then obviously you have to cut it out. Next thing is we have to cut the tights open. Like how did I always do it? So at first I cut the front and the back so I have like two legs, two separate legs now. And then I'm going to cut the middle, like not the outside, but the inside here. Just open. So I know I have these two like opened up. <laughs> Um, legs of the tights. If you're asking yourself why isn't she using just normal fabric like thin jersey or something? Um, two reasons. A. You probably don't find this thin uh, jersey that's really like it's 40 din uh, tights material. I don't know if you find something like this. A. <laughs> and B. Um, it's, um, I also use like other, as I said, other parts of my um, body also, not to body paint, but I also use then tights. And then I can use the same tights. So I have the same color for like, for example, the arms. If I make these arm, like pull the tights on my arms. And I have the same tights then material on my fingers or on my legs. So that's why I wouldn't do like, Know, make 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 your arm things out of tights and then make these out of another fabric no it's the easiest if you just buy multiple tights and then you you have this material because it's enough you don't need like meter whatever it's 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 really just enough to use see it's really just about the um, size that we need um, I don't know if you have a bigger hand or something you can maybe trick it a little bit to put your fingers a little bit tighter together, not stretching them too out. Something I'm pretty sure you can work with it. And also some tights might be a little bit bigger, you know. I mean, I always buy the biggest tights that I find. Like this is a, I don't know, what was this? XL, so extra, extra large. Um, but most of the tights don't vary, vary in the width but more just in the length so it doesn't make a huge difference but I always think I have a little bit more fabric if I use like really huge sizes so how are we going to tackle that I think this space here is the best right right in the middle here not the top part because here the fabric is a little bit different you still could use it, you still could use it. Um, but for, for this specific tights, I always use like more the middle part um, because like the very bottom part, it gets smaller, then it might not be enough um, width. And the top part here is a little bit differently structured from just from the material. So I'm using like the middle part directly when your leg would start. And I double it up like this. It's not a huge difference if you put it like this or a little bit, like bend it a little bit to the side. Um, it's stretchy all around, so that shouldn't be a big issue. And that's why I'm putting it like this, so we have all the necessary material here. And now. <laughs> Something that I forgot to show you what you need. You need um, pin, oops, pins. So just some simple pins for when you like for sewing. Um, and I'm just pinning it down.
just in some spots, not too many. So, and actually we're now good to go to the sewing machine and sew. Yes, I'm not cutting it like around the edges of the pattern. We will sew it while the pattern construction is on it and cut it afterwards. Just gonna do it um, with the other with the other side like afterwards because I just like normally I just have one pattern construction. Right now I could them do still simultaneously, but let's do it as I'm always doing it. Let's follow me to my sewing machine. So I already have like my orange thread uh, in the sewing machine. And just to tell you, I have like an industrial sewing machine, but you can do it on every one, like on a normal uh, household sewing machine. And just use your normal stitch, not a zigzag stitch, nothing like that. I can tell you it will be enough stretch in there if you um, use really small stitches. Don't use like big stitches. I use like like on the um, like I don't know the number two it is uh, with me like two uh, whatever this is called um, two millimeters I think it is. <laughs> I don't know how you would measure that if you're from America or something um, or smaller. Let's do it 1.5. And then I'm just sewing really along the edge of the pattern construction and it is no problem if your needle sometimes catches the, the, fab, uh, the, the, um, the paper because it will just go through it no problem you might damage the pattern construction a little bit but even that is not a problem um, because mine looks a little bit like this um, just make sure really close to the edge and let's Also, like um, sewed some sometimes like onto the paper, but you can just get it easily off, so that's no problem. <laughs> so when you're now putting it on, uh, you can already see if it uh, kind of worked, or do you, or if you think think it's like too um, too small or too big or anything. <laughs> it will look like if you're having like <laughs> fish hands, but it helps you. Because now, before cutting, before cutting, you can still adjust some things. I think um, I what I would do for the next, for the other one, for the right hand or the other hand, I would make them like a tiny little bit longer. Because now I also sometimes cut a little bit while while sewing at the tips of the fingers. So maybe I don't know, some millimeters longer again but otherwise I will use it for sure so woo. now we're gonna cut it and I'm using like a small uh, small scissors because you have more control when you have like a really sharp and small uh, cutting <laughs> um, item here cutting object scissors rather than using like my big um, fabric scissors to really cut very very um, like just 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 leave a tiny little bit of um, just leave a tiny little bit of seam allowance there just like some millimeters cut it as uh, uh, tight next to your seam as possible without obviously cutting the seam so this is a little bit tricky but um, we will get there Thank you. 
and you really also like in these um, in these corners in these corners here you really if you if you're not like tr like um, brave enough to really cut very deep into but it because it is also um, a little bit of dangerous then you leave a little bit more fabric there but make one cut into that direction like this otherwise you for sure will have um, folds we have to turn it inside out so you don't see the seam allowance uh, so it is inside and you have like a clean edge I'm doing it like this I'm putting it on my hand and then flipping it over and then you just have to fiddle faddle a little bit here to get it really the correct way. But really don't use scissors to get it like out because um, you might destroy the thin fabric. Next try. <laughs> now we have it like the correct way around and we will see how it looks right away. I can already see the next glove I'm making a little bit uh, less um, tight, a little bit bigger maybe, but still okay. So. Ta-da! It looks a little bit creepy because we have no fingernails and um, we will get to that later when I have done the other one and for now I just tell you you don't have to take care of this edge here of the um, hem at all because it won't fray this um, knitted material of tights is like jersey it's, it, it won't fray you can leave it like this and um, you we won't see this here because this technique really just works for characters where like uh, somehow parts of the arm or so are covered by something fabric or like for example Ahsoka is wearing like Vem braces sometimes in some of her looks like then, then you just see it from here until here and after that the orange starts again like it is covered or you have like characters with like um, with like arm warmers or if you have like either if you're wearing like like a, a like a bangle or something over it that would be cover the edge too when for example your your the rest of your arms also like covered then by by tights you don't see like this you don't see the hem here and um, so it really is just working for that otherwise you would have a seam somewhere or you would have to make it like higher or it depends but for me it I would say it just works if your like arms here are covered or if your, your character is like long sleeved anyway so <laughs> that would be the easiest way if you were just like like this da, da, da. and you already see when you bend your arm of course you will have some folds but most of it's pretty okay you can even see your like um, your bones um, underneath so when you're um, holding something or but anyways let's good get to the other one very quickly
well. Now is the only time that you have to think about left or right because right now they are like interchangeable. You don't have to take care of that uh, while sewing because left and right is exactly the same back and front. But now as you're putting on the fingernails you have to put them on one side and this will be then the right hand and the other one will be for the left hand. So I'm always putting on, you know, those fingernails, there they are, <laughs> um, while having the glove on my hand. So then let's just start putting one of them on my hand. Yep. If you decide to cover your fingernails before, like your, your actual ones, um, do it. <laughs> I'm more like careless and uh, still use uh, my super glue on the fingernail, the artificial, artificial one, of course, on the fake one, then putting it on here. And of course, it also somehow sticks a little bit to my own one underneath, but you can rip it off. So that, that has never been a problem. So yeah. That's what I'm doing now. Um, at first I start with the thumb and with the thumb it's the only um, like different spot um, because you have to put it right where the seam is because it's it's just like this and you can't like completely turn it to the side it will never sit right so from the beginning on think about putting it more like where the seam is the other ones obviously won't touch a seam at all. Put a little bit of glue on it. I, I don't think you can see that, but pressing it down. I mean, doesn't that look already so much better? <laughs> yes. If you have a character that has like longer fingernails, of course you can do that. For Ahsoka I always cut them down pretty, pretty short. They are also stuck to my own fingernails underneath but let's see how good we can uh, remove it. Whoops. just to loosen it up a little bit and then it automatically comes off but it is stuck to the material to the fabric and there we go um, maybe you're asking yourself like how good will they Will I stay on? Well, with this one here, I immediately see, ah, uh, I probably didn't apply enough glue. Well, you can always go into it again, apply more glue. And, um, but if they are like, actually like really well with this woohoo super glue that I'm using onto the material, onto the fabric, then you can also wash it. I put mine in the washing machine all the time and never ever has a fingernail fallen off. The only thing that of course happens when you're wearing them and when you're putting them in the washing machine and all that stuff, they get pilling. So that's why I had to throw away my old ones because they looked like super pilled and that doesn't look like natural like skin anymore. So that's why from time to time I have to renew them and I think this is my, 
I don't know, my third or my fourth pair. I think my third, because the first year or years of wearing Ahsoka, I painted my hands, but I hated it. I hated it because I'm not using like um, alcohol-based paint, I'm using water-based paint because alcohol-based paint, my skin is not good with it. Um, it, it really gets uh, scuffy and edgy and, and um, no, and it gets really dry. So that's why I'm using water-based paint, but just for my face, because water-based paint rubs off so easily on your hands, whatever you're touching, especially, especially if you're just touching a lightsaber or something, it gets off. And that's why I prefer using those. So let's put on uh, the fingernails of the other one and make sure that you put it now on the correct hand. I started with my left hand. I'm right-handed so it's easier to put the fingernails on the left hand but now it gets a little bit tricky because I have to put the glove on my right hand and apply the fingernails with my left hand. But we will get, uh, but we will get it done. Yeah, this one now is a little bit more, uh, I gave it a little bit more uh, material, like a little bit not as tight as the other one. And I think I prefer it like this. And it still looks good. Oof, left hand, <laughs> put on the right hand. Oops, I now put <laughs> the one that actually was meant to be for, for this finger here, but actually these three for me are kind of interchangeable. They are around the same size. But take care if your nails are like uh, differently shaped completely, like for example, like um, the, the, this finger is like the, has the biggest nail, then you have to take care that you are using the right size. But who do I tell this? I probably like... Some of you might have also used artificial nails, like in general, so there's no difference. And really press it down. always be careful don't rip rip them off just think about that it's a very delicate material and you have cut really thin um, like edges in there so but in general they hold off pretty well I didn't have many that were like um, that got a hole or anything in so yeah that's it there you go, left and right hand of the finger, like finger socks, the gloves that you can use instead of body painting your hands. Hey, I hope you enjoyed seeing this super, for me, for my level, super easy tutorial. Um, I, I can totally understand if some of you are not as experienced with a sewing machine and you might have like a little bit of struggle to really uh, so along the line or um, that you, you're not like, as experienced in cutting and then oops, you're, you're cutting like too far. Try it out um, and like these tights that I'm using, I can't show it, I just have the leftovers here, um, are really inexpensive. Like one of those tights is around, I don't know, 2 euro, 40, 2 euro, 50, something like this. It's really not a lot. So then get another one and try your luck. Um, any other like tips I can give you? Yeah, if you, for example, you have a little little hole in them for some, not not just from from cutting, but maybe just from handling them around and, and you're you're touching something and then there suddenly is a little hole. How I fix it is same as I'm doing with like real tights. I'm using um, nail polish, see-through nail polish, a transparent one. Put a little bit like the tip. Uh, on there and then the hole doesn't get bigger so and oops yeah I don't know what else I can tell you you can use it for every like cosplay character that has um, like colorful skin so um, for any kind of like Star Wars aliens uh, that have like humanoid hands like um, Togruta um, 
Quilic, uh, Sabrax, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> everything that you can you can think of. And um, as I said, the thing is, it's best when something around here around the wrist is covered, so you don't see like the end of this glove. Um, tell me uh, in the comments down below if you have another solution. Um, if you like that, or um, if you tried it out and it worked, that would be also super interesting for me. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Uh, see you real soon. May the force be with you. Bye.